Hey, just want to make a follow-up video on the F14B upgrade development and JDAM integration. The previous video, I had some mistakes that I had said. In the comments, I had said that the F14B upgrade received the GBU38. In reality, that was only on the F14D uh, towards the later end of the software stuff with that. Additionally, with the CDU, I did not uh, correctly uh, give it the right name. It's actually control, control Display Navigation Unit. A little nitpicky, but I want to make sure that I'm saying the right thing here. Moving on to a, a little bit about the video. Uh, one reading that I really liked, looking at the uh, heads-up display for the Tomcat, um, piece by John Golick, New HUD for the Tomcat. What this talks about is uh, justifying the HUD upgrade, as well as a little bit of implementation history, some specifications, as well as how the heads-up display provided a more effective pilot to the Navy. Beneath that, I have a little excerpt about the F-14B upgrade as well as the JNA integration on the rough time frame that this happened. But let's get on with the video. Looking at the Operational Flight Program 317, what this program was really around was designing the F-14B for the future. The main objectives of this Reading straight from the uh, paragraph here, that were to incorporate digital technology to gain computing, growth, reliability, and maintainability improvements to the still capable 20 year old aircraft design. I feel like this is a great representation of what the F 14B upgrade program was supposed to present to the Navy, and I believe it did a great job at that given the time that the F 14 had after the program was successfully put up. This is all going to be based around the MIL STD. 1553B data bus. I'm not going to say that full thing every time, but what this data bus is allowing the aircraft to do is digitally be modernized for future weapons, for future sensors, for whatever the uh, future may have for the F-14B, which in retrospect provided the, the PTID, the embedded GPS INS system, as well as the JDAM. At the bottom of that paragraph here, we can actually see what we were talking about in the previous video, some of the stuff that the F-14 got. Moving on there, talking about the F-14's mission computer. What the mission computer had was two processors. That's going to be your weapon control processor and your mission data processor. So what these processors are both going to do is, once again, digitally modernize the mission computer of the F-14, uh, which allows for future expansion, i.e., the JDAM, the any any new fancy digital sensors that the aircraft was looking to implement in the future. After that, looking at some new displays. So the new displays obviously is going to end up being the PTID, and then later on we will see the heads up display. Two other displays that were a part of this new system were the VDI and the ECMD. Moving on to the AUG 15. I didn't do a great job of explaining how important this new system was to the aircraft, so I figured I would talk a little bit about that. So this new fire control system, what this really is going to do is provide the F-14 with a more capable fire control system, uh, which is going to allow for more complex weapon conditions and parameters. So think of an old AIM-54 versus the new AIM-54 Charlie, the ECCM version, and this is where the uh, new AUG-15 really comes into shine. I wanted to take a look at the F-14B upgrade digital architecture. So what we have here is a great representation of the F-14B upgrades avionics setup, going from top left down to the right and then swooping back around into that middle area. What we have is the Spencer system or the ALE 39. Later, the F 14B would receive the ALE 47. And then, up top there, you have your electronic warfare bus, which is going to include your jammer and the radar warning display that would be in both the pilot and Rio seat. This is all encompassing by your radar warning receiver system. You can obviously see the PTID as well as the PM dig displayed at the top there as well as the ECMB and HSD. You can see that the station stores in the top right are also present in the left side there. 
We will talk a little bit later about the 1760 interface. Moving on from there, you can see the mission data loader as well as the TARP system, as well as how the fatigue engine monitoring system ties directly into the computer signal data converter. So the CSDC, I have a great image from Karen from Flying Wire. This is a great diagram to show what the CSDC is doing for the F-14. What it's going to do is it's going to take all these physical sensors and information and convert it into something that the aircraft can understand. What it's going to do is that's going to take all this information, the CSDC, and it's going to give it out to everything here. So you can obviously see that the CSDC is tied in to your interface unit there, the IFU, which is going to talk to your AUG9, that's going to talk to your PTID, as well as going to talk to the mission computer, and all this is being sent around to the avionics bus itself. Moving along here, you can see how the AUG15 weapon computer is talking to the F-14 mission computer that's going through the armament bus, and then you can see how that is all connected together. But moving on from there, we can talk a little bit about the Operational Flight Program 320. So before the F-14B uh, 317 flight program was completed, uh, the Navy wanted to integrate GPS navigation into the aircraft. So the general purpose of this was going to implement the uh, CDNU, or the Controls and Displays Navigation Unit. That was added to the whole avionics bus along with the embedded GPS and tied directly into the Computer Signal Data Converter, or CSTC. Additionally, they plumbed the four underbelly pylons of the F-14 with the MIL STD 1760 interface. What this would eventually end up allowing the aircraft to do is uh, provide, as it says there, GPS information to the pylons as well as the lantern pod. So I have a great image here showing how the GPS antenna is going to provide the embedded ion GPS INS system, uh, current aircraft location, as well as provide GPS information to each of the weapon pylons as well as to the lantern pod. But before that flight program could eventually come to fruition, Operation Flight Program 321 was put up to integrate the JDAM and the new Sparrowhawk HUD into the Tomcat. Additionally, it talks about the new wiring for the weapon stations again so that the JDAM could receive information. So going down from there, uh, talks a little bit about the JDAM. I didn't want to bore anybody with exactly how the JDAM works and how GPS works. The main takeaway I wanted to talk about here was that last line I have underlined, which talks about uh, how the JDAM is allowed to be an INS only mode during a GPS denied environment. I felt that it was very relevant to modern day combat. And I think that is definitely something that I wouldn't say is overlooked, but is definitely a consideration uh, when going to war with a near peer figure. Additionally, I have an image here of the JDAM's design. This is not necessarily relevant to the F-14 exactly, and that you don't really need to know how a JDAM works, but it is cool nonetheless, and it was a figure that I had access to. Moving on there, one thing that really sucks with this uh, initial design of the JDAM and the Tomcat software is that the F-14 only had static launch accessibility regions. You'll know on the F-18 side of the house that your LAR will change in size and shape depending on your aircraft speed, altitude, and other variables. However, the F-14's launch acceptability region was static in the initial design. I have another figure here showing the actual PTA display of what this would look like. So what we're seeing immediately here is we are seeing the target indicated by this triangle. We can see that station four is the selected weapon to hit this target. 
We can also see the launch point, which is another waypoint in itself, as well as some very recognizable information from the previous video. Moving on from that, the flight program guys obviously noticed that this was going to be an issue and that they actually wanted to incorporate a dynamic launch acceptability region and they suggested that this upgrade would be incorporated in a future software release. I believe this was definitely the right choice for the F-14B upgrade program and given potentially whatever software that Hebler has access to, we shall wait and see whether the software was eventually changed or not. I have some figures here that I believe would interest the crowd. What we have here is the required data as well as the optional data that the JDM could be given to either uh, provide enhancements to the weapon operation and performance. Um, you have your immediately required stuff there, which is what you'd expect, as well as what is optional. Certain things in the aircraft were not able to be changed by the F-14 as the initial stages did not allow for terminal guidance changes as the F-18 Hornet actually had the capability to do. Moving on to the second figure I have here, this is what you can expect out of the CDNU. So what we're seeing here is the RNAV page showing the blended INS setup. So my immediate takeaways from this is going to be what we can see, which is the current uh, blended latitude and longitude of the aircraft, deviation in meters and nautical miles, as well as the quality of the blended solution. Hopefully this will allow us to not have to do navigation fixes anymore. Moving on to the very last thing, we actually have the JDM target edit page. So immediately what we can see here is our launch point coordinates. We can see the altitude in which the weapon is supposed to be released from. We have the reference point. One thing I would like to mention is how you can see the numbers and cardinal directions on the bottom here. You can obviously tell that in the initial software that the aircraft's JDAM setup would have to be manually inputted this way. However, there was a report by the uh, test pilots and such with a recommendation to locate the JDAM's entry functions, i.e. the cardinal directions and all your one through nine uh, numbers through a single control in uh, future software upgrades, i.e. putting it into the CDNU or via the uh, computer address panel. Hopefully this provided some very cool information to you and hopefully I can provide a third video in the future talking a little bit more about the F-14B upgrade and what it has to offer.